Hello and welcome to chapter 9, controlling our controlled services and demons or diamonds, call it whatever you want to call it. So let's roll the intro really quick, just to looks like it looks pretty and we just go immediately to our terminal. So yeah, so let's, let's uh, kind of uh, switch things around a little bit. I don't. <laughs> so the idea here is to get a new service up and running using the um, system D. So in, in a quick uh, description, uh, in the old days, well, 10 years ago, maybe on rel, we used to use a process called init to um, control services. So um, that was the main, not, not, con not to control services, init was kind of a, the main process. What do I mean by that? So if I go here to my Rocky one and I, I do, I look for system D nowadays, you'll see that system D is kind of the, the father of all processes. Okay. So our mother, whatever you prefer, it's kind of the genesis of the system starts with, with system D. Okay. Uh, but nowadays, the next, the last 10 years or so, we, become kind of cooper we cooperate with system d for that type of stuff like power on power off shut down start a service stop a service enable a service and all of that it's different it's not bad it's not better it's not worse um it's just it is what it is you just get used to it and carry on with your lives so what i'm going to do here is the i set principle this is my principle this is not it, this is not something um it is widely widely known, but this is my principle, which is the ISET, which means install, start, enable, and test. Okay, install, start, enable, and test. So these are the four steps we're going to fulfill in order to get a new service up and running. And the service you're going to be up, put up and running is going to be HTTPD which is a web server, okay? So I'm going to install this because this is going to be the one I'm going to use for other situations and other chapters. So this is, will come into handy. So I'm going to install it, start it, enable it, and test it, and make sure that it works. All, all using newer tools, all using systemd has the, the process to manage, um, well, services, diamonds, whatever we're gonna call it. So let's start, let's start by the install. So package management is going to be a, f a, a, a chapter that we're going to discuss further on down the line. But in simple terms, if you want to install the web server, you do DNF install. If you want to quick and dirty recipe, HTTPD minus Y. This is going to install the HTTP packet and it's go our packages is going to, the minus Y means say yes to all prompts. So it makes it a little bit faster to do so. And we should be good to go, not soon enough. And there we go. The install is done. Okay. So no news, good news, no errors. It's good. Life is good. Cool. Now next, going back to our, our principle, install it's done. Now let's do the start. So start is going to make sure that the service is up and running. So this is now we're going to interact with system D. So system D, system CTL, I'm sorry, system CTL, system CTL. Okay, then I can do for, for starters a status before I do anything else, HTTPD. So the, start, the status is showing us that it's, even though the service it's, 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 um, it's loaded, exists on the system, okay, it's not, it's not running. So it's inactive. It's, it, it exists, but it's inactive. If I tell something, if I tell something really that doesn't exist, you see the difference. So this is a service that does not exist. This is one that exists, but it's not started yet. So let's start, let's start by starting it. No pun intended. The system CTL start HTTPD. No news are good news. So if there were any errors to be noticed, noted, noted, you would, you would be just be heavily notified. So no news are good news. So let's do the status again. Now the status showing you said that it's running, which is good. So no errors to, no errors to report. However, if you notice this, it's disabled. Disabled means if, you have, if I was to reboot the server now, the HTTP server would not start up at system with the system. So I would reboot it and the system and the server or service, HTTP service 
will not get up and running automatically. I had to do it by hand with the, again with the start command. So in order to enable it, yeah, now it's enabled. It means that be, by being enabled means that it's going to be automatically started by the reboot. So I reboot, I'm going to reboot the server, okay? And when I reboot the server, the 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 this serv this service the HTTPD service okay is going to be immediately started with the well with the system so I'm going to boot the server and it's going to be automatically booted which is nice um, if you want to be a little bit more fancy you can do systemctl enable minus minus now and the service name. This is going to be this is going to be enabling and starting. So you don't have to do start and enable. You just do to into in a setting. So this will enable and start the service immediately. Okay. But you can do start and enable as different commands, or just do it like this. Whatever one word, whatever suits your fancy, you just pick up the one you feel more comfortable with. It's fine. So now it's we did the install. We need this. We need the, we need the start. We need the enable. Now we need to test it. So if I go here to this to Rocky One, and do the curl, so the curl it's like it's like, it's like a text-based web browser, and it's telling me enable to connect the route to host. So if I go here, back to the status, okay, you will see that it's active and running. And however, Rocky One is telling me that it's um enable to connect with the message no route no route to host i'm going to give you a few seconds to think about what you think is it's maybe causing this so we have installed it we have started it it's enabled for the next reboot but rocky one tells me that it's unable to connect i mean unable to connect no route to host any ideas okay because uh, the pop the culprit is a firewall on on Rocky 2. It's now allowing the port 80 to be connected, which is which is uh, okay because it's by default it's not allowing, so it's it's fine, it's expected. So I'm going to do something like firewall cmd cmd minus minus list not minus minus sorry list oh yeah minus minus yeah list all zones okay this is uh, now a lot showing me all the all the firewall rules. Let's just let's just focus on one zone, which is the public zone, the default one. And and I like I I am old and oh there it is. If you want to be a little bit more easy to read, you can do grab public. You can then again do the after fifteen lines. This is going to show you the public zone. So Sorry, the public zone and the following 15 lines. So these are, the, are all the rules for the default zone, which is the public zone. And I'm going to then add here the service HTTPD, not the D, without the D, HTTP. And I could add the port, the specific port number, TCP port 80 or the, the service name. Firewall D has kind of a dictionary. So I tell them, like, and I will show that in a later chapter. So I can subscribe for that. So I'm going to add the service profile and the service profile, it's going to add the correct, the correct ports. So let's do the firewall CMD minus minus add service equals HTTP. And I'm going to say permanent. And I'm going to reload the rules. So if I don't add permanent, it will not be reapplied on the next reboot. But the thing is that permanent rules are not applied on the Im immediately. So that's why I'm going to say it's permanent for every sequential reboot. And by reloading it, it's, a, it's applied to the current rules. So if I go here, you'll see that now it's added and it's, I am connecting successfully. Let me see if I connect with the graphical browser. I can. So if, if, you, can, if you can see here, we are connecting successfully to, to our Rocky 2. Just to make, just to prove to you guys that this is it, I'm going to go to the, the var, the var www.html folder. I'm going to create a simple file. Okay, I'm going to say 
VM is not installed. You need to say something like hi from Rocky two. And now this should this should show up a little really poorly, really simple, but you can see that hi from Rocky two, it's working. So I have proved to you guys how to install a service, start it and enable it. And I have shown you guys also the bare, bare essentials to interact with systemd. So I highly recommend you guys to test the status, the start. You also have the restart option, okay? Um, also the restart option on systemd, you can do is restart the service, stop and start the service, reload the service, check the status, and see how the service is app it's running and if it is operational or not. We will see this uh, systemd popping up many, many, many times throughout the rest of the RH124 course and of course the RH134. Like and subscribe to get notified about all of this good stuff coming up next for following weeks so you can get acquainted to all the full course. One more time, like and subscribe, it will help. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.